Hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, it's 4 p.m. Uh, I'm assuming people can hear me. Uh, if not, then please, similar to last week, uh, let me know very, very quickly. Uh, excellent. Uh, I'm Dermot MacDonald. I'm a research associate at the UK Data Service uh, with my colleague uh, Julia. Uh, we've been developing some live coding demonstrations, particularly for social scientists, uh, but for people from a wide disciplinary background. Basically, if you're new to programming, uh, new to web scraping, uh, new to Python, uh, we've got stuff um, to help you. So I've got some live uh, coding demonstrations today. Um, we're on week number two. So we're focusing on collecting data from the web. So we're gonna use a technique called web scraping. Uh, so we've got about 25, 30 minutes of a live coding demonstration um, that you can follow along with uh, as well. So Julia, uh, my colleague, will post the link into the chat. Um, I'll see if I can do it as well. Uh, no, I can't. So Julia, if you could please uh, post the link. Excellent. Uh, so if you look in the stream chat option on the right hand side uh, of the stream, um, you'll see a link. Uh, if you copy and paste that link, uh, into a new tab in your browser. Um, so I'll do it here. Uh, that will launch the uh, Jupyter Notebook uh, containing the Python code uh, we're going to use uh, today. Fantastic, excellent. So it's working for me. Uh, you should see something similar. It will take maybe 10, 20 seconds uh, to load up. Uh, so yeah, if you have a second screen or if you want to split your screen, uh, then use this link. Uh, we'll give it a couple of seconds if you want to get set up. Um, and what you do then is you can enter slideshow mode. So you can see I'm hovering my cursor just up here. It looks like a bar chart. Um, basically, the whole document reads like a notebook. So it's an electronic notebook. It contains some text. Uh, and it contains code, and it contains the results of, of code as well. Um, so you can work through the document uh, as it is, but it's easier to enter uh, slideshow mode. Um, it just cleans it up uh, a little bit, um, and we can uh, begin. Excellent, so just some introductory uh, material. So today we're gonna to focus on uh, using Python to collect data found on websites. So this is more uh, colloquially or informally known as web scraping. So we're trying to scrape data uh, from a website. And we're also gonna try and just develop your computational thinking skills um, through some coding examples. So specifically when we say computational thinking, um, we're not really talking about technical ability. We're really talking about defining and solving problems. So it's using computers to try and solve human problems uh, in, a, in a sense. And the problem we have is there's data uh, that's really interesting. It's found on a website. One way of getting that data is to copy and paste manually. And um, that doesn't really scale up. It takes a lot of work on your part. Uh, so we're gonna look at how computational methods can help us collect uh, data. If people are getting, oh, I'll just take a quick, yeah, so people are getting a binder inaccessible. Um, that's strange, because it is working for me. Uh, this is not my personal copy. Uh, let me just try again. So I'll move it onto my screen here. Copy and paste. Uh, it seems to be loading for me. So I'm accessing that notebook through the web. It's not on my machine. Yeah, keep keep posting messages, unfortunately. Oh, I ignored the error message. Okay, I haven't seen the error message. Um, so somebody's just posted a solution. If you ignore the error message. Ah, perfect, people are figuring it out. Excellent, thank you. You're uh, much more tech literate than I am. Fantastic, well done, guys. Okay, back to the presentation. Yeah, so the two aims, uh, we'll look at how Python can be used to uh, collect data from the web, and we'll just, we'll try and define what we're doing in terms of problem solving. Uh, so briefly today, uh, I will make myself a little bit smaller, so you can see the slides, and we'll make this a little bit 
smaller as well. So this has been designed as a kind of self-taught or self-directed uh, teaching material. I'll go through almost all of it today, but there's a little bit more in the notebook that we don't cover. Um, so you've got the link. Uh, you'll be able to work through this yourself. It takes about 30 to 60 minutes. Um, today, I'm assuming no knowledge of Python, no knowledge of web scraping will take you from you know, right from the beginning. Um, but we did do a, a session last week specifically on Python. Uh, so you may find it useful to work through that um, at a different time uh, as well. Um, it's for anybody, so thank you for tuning in. Uh, and yep, today you'll understand the general approach for collecting data from web pages, um, but you specifically will be able to use Python for getting a web page, parsing its contents, so that's understanding the structure, extracting the data you need, uh, and then saving that data uh, to a file for future uh, use. So if you're new uh, to Jupyter Notebooks, um, as I said, it contains a lot of text, it contains results of analysis, um, but the meat and drink of it is the code. So you can run the code uh, that's contained in the notebook. Uh, so basically all you need to do are look for cells that on the left-hand side have this IN uh, square bracket uh, symbol. And then all you have to do is run or execute uh, those cells. So now that we're in slideshow mode, um, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. So for me, that's shift and enter at the same time. Um, or you can use control and enter uh, as well. So here we have some really basic uh, Python code. Um, so I do shift and enter, uh, and it executes the code. So it asks me uh, for my name. I give it my name, and it gives me uh, a little... Um, a little gentle message uh, to say good luck with what you're doing. So straight into it, what is uh, web scraping? So it's a computational technique uh, for capturing information stored uh, on a web page. Computational is the key word, because um, as I said, you could manually go to a web page. So you could open your browser, put in the web address, and then when you see the content appear, you could start, you know, copying and pasting, you could highlight the text, you could right click, copy, etc. And then maybe you paste that into an Excel file or a Word document or a TXT file. I'm sure you can understand the considerable disadvantages uh, collecting data from the web manually um, would bring. There's you know, the potential for human error. It's so time intensive. One of the examples we'll see today is to collect data about charities. There are 160,000 in England and Wales alone. If I wanted all of their data on a certain topic, yeah, it's it's not really uh, going to happen. So what's the uh, general approach? So no matter what programming uh, language you use, um, be it Python, R, Julia, PHP, uh, there's so many that you can use, um, there is a general logic, there's a general approach for collecting data. So the first thing we need to do is, well, we need to decide on what we're interested in collecting. So let's say we can think of a web page. Um, so the UK Data Service, for example, uh, has its website here. So that's the location of the UK Data Services uh, website on the web. So this is known as a link or URL or web address. So this is the location of the UK Data Service website uh, on the internet. So we need to know that. Once we do, then we need to find information that we're interested in on that web page. Um, so for example, there might be a paragraph that we're interested in extracting. There might be a table of statistics. Uh, there might be lots of images or videos. There may be links we want to collect on a web page. So we need to know where that information um, is stored. And that's a visual process, as we'll see. There's not really a, a computational or programmatic way of doing that. You do manually inspect um, the web page. So you need two key pieces of information, the web address of the website uh, and the location of the information that you're interested in collecting. So then we're into the doing stage. So what we want to do then is request the web page using its address, and we're going to do that in Python. And then we're going to parse the structure of that web page uh, using Python, so then we can actually work with its contents. Uh, and I'll explain what that actually means uh, when we do it uh, in practice. So once we actually parse the structure of the website web page, then it's about getting the information uh, we're interested in. And most importantly, we want to save our work so we don't have to redo uh, the web scrape uh, as well. So these kind of six basic uh, steps that we've laid out is called pseudocode, or in a very simple way, it's an algorithm. You know, It's the rules we need to follow in order to collect data uh, from the web. 
So we're going to look at two examples today, one real social science data example uh, to do with charities. Uh, but to learn the techniques, uh, we're going to use a, a much simpler example. Uh, it's a real website, um, but it has been designed for practicing um, web scraping. Okay, so where does this? Uh, where can we find this website? Um, so the web page is here at this uh, web address. Uh, we can take a quick look. Again, if I was to uh, open this in a new tab, I can get a look at the uh, web page. Uh, so it's just a really simple text uh, web page. It contains an extract from uh, Herman Melville's classic English uh, literature uh, work, Moby Dick, um, and it's just. I'm not sure which page this is from, but it's certainly a section from uh, Moby Dick. We can actually load that website uh, in Python. Um, oh yes, and if you're wondering how to, um, I should have said that at the beginning, if you're following along on the binder link, uh, it's the spacebar to go forward and it's shift and spacebar to go back. So I've just went back and spacebar goes forward. So apologies. Uh, you can use the directional keys, but it's a bit um, tricky. So as I said, if I want to take a look at that website in Python, um, I can load in the module I need in Python. So there's an iframe module that we need. Then I can use the iframe method. I tell it the website I want to view, and I just want to adjust the width and the height. Uh, so for example, just to show you that we can edit this, you know, now the width's not as large, so it's more difficult uh, to see the web page. So this is a useful feature uh, of Python and Jupyter Notebooks that you can embed videos and images and other websites um, into the notebook. So good. So we've done the first thing. We've said, OK, we know where the website is. We know its web address. Uh, now we need to find the information we're interested in. In this example, it's really simple. Uh, we just want this big, long paragraph uh, here. This is what we want to um, scrape. So we want to ignore this header here, and we just want uh, the uh, text. OK, so we can visually see where that um, paragraph is, but that's not really what we need. So what we need is the underlying code that powers a web page. So that's called HTML. Uh, it's hypertext uh, markup language. And um, that's a, basically a very simple programming language for creating web pages. And what HTML does is it describes the structure of a web page. And it does that by defining a series of elements, so paragraphs, tables, headers, images, links. Uh, all of these elements together make up a web page. And then each element uh, is uniquely identified by what's called a tag. So a paragraph is identified by a p tag, a table is identified by a table tag, um, a top level header is identified by the h1. Um, tag. And uh, this link here has just some extra uh, quite useful information uh, on HTML. So when you're trying to find information on a web page, it's not what you visually see um, when you load the, the website. So the fact that you know this is the first thing I see doesn't actually tell me where that header is on the web page. Uh, what I need to do is actually look uh, at the source code. So we need to do this uh, manually and visually. So I'll open this in a new tab just to make it clear what I'm doing. So what we need to do, so I'm using uh, Firefox as my web browser. So what I want to do is I want to right click anywhere on this web page and I want to go to um, view page source. And what that does is it shows us the underlying code uh, powering this website. Um, so this is what HTML looks like. It's a series of tags. So uh, we've got a HTML tag saying this is the beginning of our web page. Uh, we've got some head tags. Uh, usually within this, you'll see metadata about the page. Um, for example, if you have Google Analytics tracking uh, views of your page, um, there'll be some code here about Google Analytics. Uh, but for scraping information, what we're interested in is everything within the uh, body tags. So there's an opening and a closing tag, and within that is the information um, we need. So we can see the header here, uh, Herman Melville, Moby Dick. Uh, it's in a H1 tag. And then the information we're interested in scraping uh, is contained within, firstly, within a div tag, uh, and that means section in HTML. And then the actual information itself is within these two p tags. Uh, so it's a really simple web page. 
everything we need is within this p tag uh, here. So let's see how we can use Python uh, to get that information. So we've visually inspected. Uh, if you're using Chrome, uh, it's similar. It's uh, right click and view page source. Safari is a little bit different. Uh, I think there's a developer option you need to uh, enable first. So I have a link here uh, of instructions uh, if you're on uh, Safari. So again, uh, I've shown you the actual um, source code uh, as well, but I've just put it in the notebook. Um, here's a full uh, HTML uh, web page. Excellent, so we have our two key pieces of information, the web address uh, and the tags on the web page uh, uh, relating to the information uh, we want to collect. So let's request the web page. Uh, so we know how, how to do that using our browser. I've just shown you, you copy and paste the link in, you press enter uh, and the web page appears in your browser. Python can do that for you, um, but there's just one quick uh, preliminary step uh, is we need to load in uh, modules that help us do the web scraping. So Python comes with lots of functionality built in. So for example, uh, if you wanted to do calculations, you know, right out of the box, um, you know, Python knows how, what multiplication is. Uh, if you wanted to, you know, print a message, we saw that earlier, um, you know, the print command already exists uh, in Python. Uh, but lots of other uh, commands and functionality need to be loaded in uh, to Python. Uh, so we need these three key modules uh, for scraping uh, a web page. So we need the OS module, which is good for working with your operating system. So it's to navigate you know, between file folders to create new files, uh, these kind of actions. For scraping a web page, we want the requests module. So that mimics you know, copy and pasting the link into your web browser and then beautiful soup uh, which we'll call soup and um, that's for actually parsing the web page so soup tells python hey you're not just working with text you're working with an html file and um, so i run this code uh, and then i print a little message just to say you know the modules have been loaded in so let's uh, actually request the web page so i need to tell python okay where is this web page found so I define a variable called URL uh, and its value is uh, the link to the web page. Next, I use the requests module. From the requests module, I use the get method. So you can see it's quite you know, easy to understand in Python. If I want to get a web page, I use the get method. Uh, what am I getting? I'm getting this variable here, which earlier we've defined uh, as this web address. And then there's a little option to do with the um, get method, which is if we get tried, if uh, the website tries to redirect us to the correct uh, website, we allow that. But it'll work. It'll work without that, so we can get rid of it. And then the last line of code here basically says, "Tell me if the request uh, was successful." So a 200 code in response to requesting a web page means, "Yep, yeah, we've sent you the web page. Everything has gone." Uh, as expected. I'm sure just by using the web, um, you've come across uh, 404 errors when you try and request the web page. Uh, so that's an unsuccessful request. Uh, that means something on your end has gone wrong, so you haven't done it correctly. Uh, if you get a 500 or a 501, a 502, there's something wrong with the website itself. So maybe it's down for maintenance, maybe there's an issue, um, etc. So we're looking for a 200 um, code. Good, so the request has worked, but you may be thinking, where's the web page? Um, I thought you said uh, we've requested it. So we have, but first we can just take a quick look at some of the metadata um, associated with our request. Um, so there's an attribute uh, of the response variable called headers, and this is what the web page gives back to us when we, we request it. You don't really need to know much about this. Um, there's a handy date field, which as you can see here, uh, tells you the last time that web page was updated. Um, the content type can be interesting. You can see that we're working with a HTML file. It's possible to use Python to download um, files from the internet. So this might say something like um, Excel, or it might say JSON, or it might say a different file type. Uh, it might say PDF, for example. 
but in general, you don't really need to know much uh, about the metadata. It's just important to know, you know, it's there. It just proves that the website has communicated with you and it's talking back to you saying, here's some information uh, about your request. So what's the actual content of our request? So we've successfully gotten the web page, um, but you know, where's the content? Where's the, where's the title? Where's the paragraph um, that we requested? So we've got something called the text attribute. Uh, so you'll remember earlier, we stored the uh, results of a request in a variable called response. Now we could call that variable whatever we want, scrape underscore results, chicken, it doesn't matter, it's just a variable name, but it stores uh, all of the results from the request. So it stores, you know, whether it was successful or not, it stores, um, it stores the metadata as we've seen, and it also stores the web page itself. So this is what we've actually requested. So give me the HTML um, behind that web page. So we can kind of see, you know, the structure of the HTML. You know, we can see the opening HTML tag. You know, we can see the heading tag and we can see the paragraph tag, but it's a bit messy as you can see. So Python understands that it's text and we can view the text, but it doesn't recognize it as HTML. And this is the next crucial step. This is what we need the beautiful soup um, module for. Beautiful soup then tells Python, hey, this isn't just a blob of text. This is actually a web page. And then once you know it's a web page, you can start extracting the information uh, you need. And this is what we call parsing the web page. It's just basically, you know, identifying the structure uh, of the web page. So we're going to use the beautiful soup uh, module. Um, really good open source module for Python, uh, and it provides a systematic way of navigating the elements uh, of a web page. So let's see how it works um, in practice. It's a one line bit of code. Um, so we're using the soup method, uh, and into it we're saying, hey, take the text that we requested and parse it as HTML. So tell Python we're working with a HTML object, uh, and then we're just gonna view the new variable uh, that we created, uh, and voila. So we can see that now Python recognizes that A, it's a hierarchical uh, structure. So HTML is hierarchical, there's opening and closing tags, uh, and the content you know, runs from the top uh, to the bottom. So now we can see uh, Python understands that. You know, if we went back just to you know, the raw text, you can see that Python you know, doesn't understand that there are tags, it doesn't understand that there's a hierarchy, uh, etc. But now that we've parsed it as a beautiful soup uh, object, uh, now Python knows we're working with HTML. So that's not just an academic, uh, you know, piece of knowledge. Uh, now we can actually use Python to navigate and extract uh, the information of interest. So you'll remember that what we want is the text contained within a paragraph. Um, a paragraph is identified by the P tag. So what we're going to do is use beautiful soup. Uh, we're going to use the find method, and we're just going to find uh, the P tag on the web page, which we've called soup underscore response. We're going to save the results of our search uh, in a variable called paragraph, and then we're just going to view the contents of that variable. And again, now we can see, okay, we've you know cut out the rest of the HTML, and now we have a variable called paragraph that just contains the p tag uh, and the information uh, within it. So we're almost there. So now the next thing is we know uh, that there's a p tag we're interested in. How do we get the text uh, from within the uh, p tag? So again, we use the find method on the super response variable to capture the p tags. Um, and now we need to um, extract the text like so. So again, um, the new variable we created paragraph, that has a text attribute. Um, so I'm just gonna take the text from within the P tags and store it in a new variable called data. And we'll just take a little look um, at the data right now. And that's actually almost all there is to it. Uh, certainly with this example, so we've you know, we've requested the web page, we've parsed it as a HTML page in Python, 
we filtered out all the other elements of the web page just so we have the paragraph we need uh, and then we've extracted the text uh, contained in that paragraph uh, and as you can see here uh, now we have a new variable called data which just contains the information uh, from that uh, paragraph so we might want to save this uh, for future use so we'll do that very simply we'll just create a brand new txt file and um, the first step is just create a variable that's um, defines where the file uh, is located. So basically, I'm just going to save the file um, where it currently, uh, where we currently are. So this um, script is running somewhere uh, online, and basically, I just want to create a new file at the same uh, location as this code. Basically, in the same folder we're working in, create a new file called Moby Dick Scrape Data uh, .txt. So what I want to do is I want to open this uh, file that I've defined here. So open the file, uh, open it in write mode. So write means, you know, save uh, in computer science language. Uh, we just want to call that file F for shorthand, that's all. And with that file, write the data uh, to it. So we didn't get any output because we haven't asked Python to print anything uh, to the screen. So what we need to do is check if this actually worked to see if I'm not just uh, tricking you. So the simplest way to check is, you know, whether A, the file was created, and B, the actual contents um, were written to it. And this is a good test here because we're, I'm currently working with the online version. So, you know, the file is not on my machine. I can't go looking for it on my machine. So I need to actually use Python uh, to go find it. So there's a method called um, list so list directory so basically this lists all the contents uh, in the current folder uh, so this will check if the txt file was created uh, and yes yes that has so that's really good so we know python has at least created the file but remember the next step was opening the file and placing the data um, into it so we're basically just doing the same as saving the file but this time opening the file but this time in read mode, so in importing mode, um, read in the contents of the file, store them in a variable called data, uh, and then print uh, the variable data. And voila, we get back to the original data uh, that we scraped. And again, just to show that with you know Python variable names, you know, can be whatever, I can store the results in something called this. Um, so you've seen I haven't created that variable before. I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not showing you one I've made uh, previously. Uh, again, I've opened the file. I've read the contents of the file, stored them in this variable, and I just want to look at the contents of this variable uh, here. And I can just zoom out a bit. Uh, you can see it's, you know, it has collected. Um, I have scraped all of that paragraph. I have saved it to a file, uh, and I've had. Uh, and I've been able to import the file uh, once uh, more. And voila, uh, that's how we have successfully uh, scraped um, a web page. So now for the rest of this, uh, for about five or 10 more minutes, um, I'm gonna show you a slightly more complicated example. It uses all the same uh, techniques uh, that we've done, but in reality, you know, trying to collect research relevant data from a web page, it carries a few extra tasks basically. So the web page we were just working with was very simple. It had one paragraph. It made it very easy to find the data we were interested in. You know, most websites will have you know quite you know rich web pages. There'll be lots of data uh, spread across the web page that we want to collect, or there might be multiple pages we want to scrape uh, as well. We had one p tag, but there could be multiple p tags on a web page. We only want one of them. So how do we filter out all the irrelevant p tags and just get to the one that we actually need? And of course, there's lots of other tags we could work with um, as well. And lots of other you know, potential issues. What happens if the web page is down? Does your script break? You know, Can you control for that, um, et cetera? So we're gonna look at a, a piece of social data um, that it makes it slightly more uh, complicated uh, to collect data. So for one of us, myself, um, web scraping is a tool for collecting data that I just can't get 
any other uh, way. So I'm interested in UK charities in particular. Um, so I want to scrape data uh, from charity web pages. Um, you know, that data is not, you know, released in a file. It's not on an open data portal, for example. Some information about charities I can only get from a web page. So it's a necessity to create uh, research data for myself. So for this specific example, I'm interested in um, which policies a charity, uh, you know, reportedly has in place. That sounds a bit dry. Why it's interesting to me is you can link that data to observed uh, organizational outcomes. So we know which charities go bust. Uh, we know which charities, you know, break the law. That's all open data. So we've got an open data set. And if we can collect information, you know, on policies, for example, then we can explore correlations. So, you know, if, a if most charities who go bust actually have a risk policy, then, you know, what's the point of having one? Or maybe the purpose, uh, the point of having a risk policy in itself mightn't be a big step, but it forces you to think about risk and maybe those charities last longer, for example. So for my research area, um, there is a real need uh, to collect this data. So we'll go through this example. I'll go through it quicker than the previous one because we're employing all the same steps, but I'll just stop uh, at certain points uh, where you'll see something uh, different. So again, we need a couple of extra modules, but really the same ones as before. We need requests and OS. We need beautiful soup. Um, this is just the iframe module for embedding a web page. So the only new module is called Pandas. Uh, it's a data set module in Python. Uh, it's similar to the tidyverse in R, for example, if that's what you're used to using. So what do we want to do? We want to identify the web page I want to scrape data from. Uh, I'm going to focus on an incredibly well-known charity, uh, Oxfam. So we're going to try and get their data. Um, so basically the web address looks uh, like uh, this. So here's Oxfam's public uh, data on the charity regulators webpage. Uh, so there's lots of, you know, um, administrative information, you know, Oxfam's website, you know, if you want to get in contact, it's headquarters in Oxford. Uh, and then some information about what the charity actually does. So here's its charitable purposes. So the relief of poverty, overseas aid, um, the groups that it, it purports to help, um, and the type of activities uh, it engages in. The information I'm particularly interested in is in the documents tab uh, and way down here, here we go. Uh, there's a little section called policies and under which uh, are listed the policies this charity uh, says uh, it has. Uh, and again, you know, we can use Python to actually embed uh, that web page uh, as well. So we know where it is visually. There's a documents tab. There's a heading called policies. Um, but again, in terms of the source code, where is that list of policies? Uh, and it's under um, a section uh, called um, PCG dash uh, charity details, etc. So there's a div tag. The div tag has an ID or a class attribute um, with this value here. There's a, a header three and then there's a series of span tags. Uh, the text within contains the policy we're uh, interested in uh, scraping. So let's do this bit quickly. We now know how to request a web page. It's the exact same as we've done before. Um, you know, define a variable capturing the web address, request the web address, uh, and just check if it's successful. Fantastic, uh, it was a successful uh, request. Good, so Python now has the text of that web page. Now we need beautiful soup. Uh, I'll just make this a little bit bigger. Uh, again, we want to take the text um, that we requested, parse it as HTML. Um, because this is a more detailed website, um, you'll get much more information. So, you know, the web page itself is more complicated. There's more code, as you can see here. It's not oceans of code, but you know it's a more it's a more complicated uh, web page. But again, we can see with Python, we've requested the web page and we've parsed it um, using the beautiful soup uh, module. Okay, so we want to extract the uh, policy information, and this is where it gets a little bit more complicated than we saw with the previous one. So we know that there's a div tag um, containing the policy information. We know that the div tag is identified using uh, the class attribute 
uh, and using this value here. The problem is there are multiple div tags um, with this class attribute. So we can't just use find, we have to use find all. So first we need to find all the div tags and then we need to filter uh, through them. So this is similar to what we did before. Uh, before we just used the find method, now we're using find all. So find all div tags that match this condition. So find all the div tags where the class equals this value here. Um, and then I'm just gonna view how many sets of tags um, are returned. So there are seven div tags uh, with this class attribute. Um, so one of those we know contains the policy information. In case you're wondering what the other ones are, I mean, this is one of the sections. So one, two, three, four, five, uh, I think six and seven, and I think this has a different class attribute. So seven div tags that we need to um, work through. If we want to actually see the div tags themselves, um, remember we've stored the results in a variable called sections. We can take a look at um, that variable itself. So we can see that there is a list of div tags. Uh, so the first one I found, uh, yep, uh, refers to the governing document. Um, the next one it finds uh, is, yeah, the one called other regulators, um, etc. So we know we've got a little bit more of a challenge, which is basically finding uh, the correct section. So what we do is, okay, we define a search term. So I know that the information I want is contained under a header called policies. So what I want to do is I want to define that as a search term. And then I want to loop through all of the div tags. So we have seven div tags. And for each tag, I want to check if that search term uh, exists uh, in that tag. So that's what we're doing here. So for every section in sections, again, this could be for for chicken in sections, it can be called whatever. So this is the variable name we defined earlier, but this is just the placeholder. Um, and I'll, I can show you an example of what I mean in a second. So for every div tag, if the search term is found, basically tell me which div tag um, you found it in, um, show me the location of that div tag. Uh, if you if you don't find the search term, just keep going through the loop. So for each div tag, check if the search term is found. If not, move on to the next um, div tag. Probably easier if I just show the results um, of this. So I created a new variable here called policy section, uh, and it contains the div tag I need. So that piece of code up here um, loops through each div tag, and when it finds the correct one, um, it creates a variable here containing the information. So I'll just spend a quick moment um, explaining what I mean by a, uh, uh, what I mean by looping through um, a list. So, uh, can I shut this output? Ah, there we go. Oh. Okay, I, I'm just trying to create a new cell. Let me just exit slideshow mode a second. Yeah, here we go. Um, so I'll just show you really quickly how we can use um, a list. So let's say I have a list of fruits. So let's create a, a very quick list. So I have a list of values, so let's call it apple, pear, and I might misspell this, um, banana, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I've created a new list called fruits, uh, and I can have a look at its um, contents. So you can see this list has three items, uh, three words are contained in this um, list. So if I wanted to figure out um, which fruit uh, is listed first. Now I know I can visually see that, but imagine the list had hundreds and hundreds uh, of items. So I could say, uh, let's comment this out, um, fruits.index um, pair. And that returns the value one. So what I've asked Python is tell me where in the list the value pair um, occurs. And that might seem like a strange result that it says one 
even though I can visually see it's the second element in the list. The issue with uh, Python is it starts counting from zero. So zero is the first item in the list, one is the second item in the list, uh, two is the third item in the list, uh, etc. So that's where Python gets a little bit um, tricky. So for example, where is Apple in the list? It's at position um, zero. And this is what's going on here. So we're looping through uh, each of the div tags. Uh, and once it finds the correct search term, uh, it finds the uh, location in the list where that search term is found. So for us, it's, um, it's found in position five. So it's the sixth div tag in the list of div tags that we downloaded. Um, and then we uh, extract that div tag based on its location. So I realized that's a slightly, slightly trickier element uh, that we hadn't, that we didn't need to do um, previously. But now we know uh, the correct uh, div tag. So we now have a variable called policy uh, section. Um, we know that that contains the information uh, we need. Okay, so now we have the correct div tag, similar to before. Uh, we know that that div tag contains span tags. Each span tag has the policy information. So again, we want to loop through each span tag. So for every tag that we can find, um, we want to extract the text uh, and save it in a variable. And then what we want to do is we want to combine the charity name with the individual policy. And then we want to append this information uh, to a blank list um, up here. And again, once we run it, I think it'll show uh, much more clearly uh, what I mean. So it gives me what looks like um, you know, a long format data set. So if you can imagine you know, a survey that you know, repeatedly um, surveys the same people. So a row is not uniquely identified by Oxfam because Oxfam appears multiple times. A row is uniquely identified by the combination of the charity and the policy uh, in question. So that's what I mean by a long format. Um, so you can see we've gone through each individual span tag. We've picked out the text and stored it in a variable here. Uh, we've combined the charity name uh, and the policy, uh, and we've added all of that into a blank list um, up here. So that's really good. We know in Python that we have the information we need. As social scientists and researchers in general, we probably want to actually put that data you know, into a file, into something a bit more friendly uh, that we can load into SPSS or Stata, for example, or OR, if that's what you're using. So we want to save the results. Um, so the new thing we're going to do is use the uh, pandas module. Um, so that's similar to the tidyverse in OR. It provides methods for working with um, data sets uh, in uh, Python. So what we want to do is we want to use the pandas module. We want to use the data frame method. Uh, and what we want to do is create two columns. Uh, so two variables called charity name and policy. And under each of these um, columns, we want to put the list that we created um, earlier. And again, it's probably much easier to see this uh, in terms of the results. So now we've created something that looks a little bit more like what we're familiar with. So we've got a data set. So row one, uh, we've got the charity's name uh, and the specific policy um, itself. So now we want to uh, take that data frame that we've created and we want to save that to a file just like we did earlier. Exact same process, a variable that stores the location and the name of the file we want to save to. Um, and this time we don't have to you know, open the file and do you know, a couple of lines of code. We've created a data frame and we can use the to CSV method. What are we doing? So taking the data that's stored here um, and putting it into this file um, right here. I will just do the same steps as before, check whether the file was created and check whether the actual contents um, exist uh, also. So I'm going to list uh, all the files and folders uh, and we can see here. Yep. And hopefully again, you'll believe me that if you go back in the code when we run, we ran that command previously, um, you'll have noticed that um, that file didn't exist. So again, I'm not tricking you. It's not all set up to work. This is, you know, live coding. We are, you know, 
scraping things and saving things in real time. So we know the file uh, exists. And again, we can use the pandas module. Um, it's got a read underscore CSV method. So again, go to this file here, read in the data, and these are just some options about how to read it in. Uh, you, don't, you don't need these. Um, and here we go. So read in this file and store the contents in a variable called data. And here we are back where we began uh, a moment ago. Voila, so what have we, I was gonna say, what have I learned? What have we learned? Excellent. So those were two fairly uh, involved examples. So thanks for sticking uh, with me. I always say it's a half hour, um, but it's always a little bit longer. But I think you have learned some uh, really practical skills. So firstly, you've learned how to import modules uh, into Python. This is crucial for social science work, you know, for computational social science. Um, you'll need to download and install uh, modules on your machine and then import them uh, into Python. Uh, thankfully, when you download Python itself, most of the modules we've used come as standard. Um, you just have to import them into your Python session uh, each time. Again, if you've used R, this is similar to the library command uh, for loading in functions. Uh, we've learned how to request and parse web pages. So two steps, uh, can we actually request the data we're interested in? And then can we parse uh, the request that we've made as a HTML file? So beautiful soup, no idea why it's called that, um, is the module you use to parse contents. Uh, and then we've done the non-trivial, slightly boring, but really important task of reading and writing uh, from files. This is a task you're going to engage in lots doing computational uh, social science. Uh, and hopefully, you know, you've learned as well how to structure your code and to do this in a very kind of efficient and clear uh, manner. Maybe I haven't gotten it across in a very clear way, um, but, you know, hopefully the way the code is written, you know, it's concise, but there's some helpful comments uh, telling you uh, what's going on. So this was a very, um, you know, very focused on the live um, demonstration. Um, we do have a web scraping um, series of webinars. So we did three and there's three no or a couple of notebooks supporting what we've done where we go into much more detail, you know, about the ethics and the limitations um, of web scraping. Uh, so for today, we just focused on the practicalities. Um, but, you know, so with great power comes great responsibility. So you have to start thinking about things like data protection, um, website terms of service. So what are you actually allowed to do with the website? Um, that's actually a contract between you and the website, the terms of service. So it's, it's important to read that. Um, the Charity Commission website we use today is, the information is um, available under the open government license. So we're allowed to scrape that data, which is good. But there's lots of murky ethical issues. Should you scrape personal information? Um, for example, people. So this is really interesting, but you know, here are the 12 trustees on the board of Oxfam UK. Uh, so, you know, we don't get their age or the date of birth or their address or whatever. Um, but we do get the other charities uh, they're on the board of. So we can then maybe start to pin down who these people are exactly. So, you know, there's some ethical issues uh, as well uh, about scraping data. But it's hugely exciting. It's hugely um, powerful uh, means of, of collecting data. Uh, so it's a brief, you know, lesson. Hopefully, it's you know whetted uh, your appetite. Um, as I said, we've got some free training materials um, that we did a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure some of you were probably on that. Uh, so thanks for coming back. Um, again, so you know, we've got some. We've still got three webinars that you can watch, uh, and we've got some uh, Jupyter notebooks as well. Um, that go into much more detail. So this website's one, uh, you know, covers a lot of the ethics and limitations. Uh, yeah, so value of web scraping, limitations, ethical considerations. Uh, and there's an example where we capture COVID-19 uh, data as well. Uh, I quite like this free book, um, Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. That's how I learned a lot of mine uh, a couple of years ago, my Python abilities. Um, yeah, chapter 12 is quite good uh, on web scraping. Um, it covers a lot of what I've covered, but there's you know a little a couple of extra cool techniques as well, um, and it's actually really good for working with files. So it's really good for using Python to work with PDFs, Google spreadsheets, 
Uh, and there's some, like, you know, some interesting things if you want to automate the sending of emails using Python, uh, which is quite interesting uh, also. So that is the 30 minute demonstration elongated to 45 minutes. So apologies, but again, hopefully you found that really useful. Um, I can see a long list of questions. Uh, my lovely assistant, Julia, has been uh, tackling those, uh, but now I'm going to jump in uh, as well. So I'm going to take the first question. Uh, so with less static pages, um, so yes, okay. So there's a really good question here. So there's a difference between a static and a dynamic web page. So this is a static web page. What that means is when you request it, all of the information in that web page is 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 um, is shown to you uh, at the same time. So all of the source code uh, is uh, loaded in uh, when you request the web page. Uh, staying with the charity field, so Republic of Ireland Charity Regulator. So this is a different website. Um, so some web web pages are known as dynamic web pages. What that means is when you request the web page, some of the information is loaded in, but then as you click through the web page, additional information is brought in as you click through. Uh, and I'm sure we've, you know, we can think of examples where if there's a search function, for example, um, when you click on search, then, you know, a list of results magically appear underneath uh, the search button. That's an example of a dynamic uh, web page. So uh, there's an Irish charity called Goal, uh, sports charity. And watch what happens to the web page here. So see that? So some of the content is being dynamically um, loaded uh, in. So when I initially request the web page, and I'll do it again just to show you. Um, let's just do it one more time. So I'm going to look for this charity. Cool. I want to scrape its data. It requests the web page, but then it loads in some extra um information and this only occurs because I'm using a web browser so if I was to use Python uh, it wouldn't load in that extra information so sorry so this is a long-winded way of saying yes there are ways of using Python and um, to collect data from dynamic web pages and uh, there's basically two approaches one is you bypass the web page itself and you try and connect to the database that is providing the dynamic information uh, so that's possible with the Republic of Ireland uh, charity regulator. There's actually an online database the web page is pulling information from, and I can actually bypass the web page directly to the database. The second approach is to use a module called Selenium in Python. Basically, this mimics the launching of a browser. So this tricks the web page into thinking you're actually working with a browser and that you're actually clicking on elements um, on the page. So there are two solutions uh, to working with dynamic uh, web pages. It's not particularly difficult. I suppose it's just recognizing that it is a dynamic web page um, and then you have to find a solution. Um, cool. Uh, oh, and yeah, automate the boring stuff is brilliant. Yeah, that's, oh, it's a, it's an online course as well. Fantastic. Um, and the actual, oh, it's not free as a PDF. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so there's a, an extra question here. So if you're interested in UK government um, data stored on web pages, um, as you'll probably notice, the UK government website, you know, is, is highly consistent. So, you know, all the charity data, all the web pages look very similar. Um, so is there a way of uh, easily automating the scraping across many sites with different HTML structures? Um, yeah, so if all the if the underlying source code is, is quite different from page to page, yeah, then you have to tailor your code to each specific um, website. So for example, uh, if I was to search for a different charity uh, here, um, let's say I'm looking for, yeah, any, so let's just click the Arts Foundation here. We can see its web page looks the same. So I know that I can loop over a list of charity numbers request the web page and I'll get the same elements every time in the web in the web page and I can extract the same information if the page looked different then yes your I suppose your code does have to be different for each individual web page and um, there's probably elements that will remain the same so the process of requesting is the same 
um, the search term you're looking for might be the same. Um, but no, if you've got different structured web pages, you need code tailored for each individual uh, web page. Uh, we've got a very cheeky question is, yes, you could scrape the automate the boring stuff <laughs> web uh, site if you wanted. I'm sure you could. That's quite clever. Um, yeah, and then as someone's pointed out with the UK government website, um, there's an online database known as an API that you can connect to uh, instead. So that's yeah, really good. Um, yeah, any other last questions? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, a very, very good question. So how would I go about scraping data from multiple links? And um, so let's say a web page um, has a link, has a list of companies, uh, and each company has a link to further information. Yep, that's a really good question. Uh, yep, that's really possible. Uh, it's really doable. So uh, for example, let's try and do it really, really quickly. Uh, yeah, so let's yeah, let's request Oxfam's web page. Yeah, so we're here, we've done all that. Uh, yep, so let's request Oxfam's web page and yep, parse it as HTML. Uh, it might take a while. Uh, thankfully, I've run it on my machine, so let's do that really quickly. <laughs> Always good to have a backup. So basically what you're doing is you're asking to find all of the A tags instead of the P tags. So A stands for link um, in HTML. So let's show you how that's done. So let's parse the web page uh, and then let's, let's say, let's find links instead. So let's create a new variable called links. Uh, and then I want to find all the A tags. And I, I'm not interested in um, the differences between A tags just yet. Um, I'm just trying to find uh, all the links. Yeah, so as you can see here, now instead of scraping paragraphs or sections, um, I found all of the links uh, on the Oxfam uh, charity uh, webpage. A lot of these links, you know, aren't necessary. So this is a link to a survey, you know, that the regulator wants you to fill out. You know, there's lots of internal links um, to the web page, uh, but we've got a link here. So on the Oxfam web page, there's a link to its record uh, on Companies House, which is the company uh, regulator. So that information would be, uh, so we're gone from Oxfam, so let's just show you again. Yeah, perfect. So this is the link here. So we've found a link that looks like this, and it corresponds to this link here, which takes you to uh, the Company House um, Regulators website, uh, voila. Uh, so yes, yeah, so um, if you want to scrape data, if you want to scrape links from a web page, yeah, that's easily done as well. Now that we have a list of links, I could say for every one of these links, extract the information contained in the href tag, and for each of these links, I would use requests.get and request each of those web pages uh, in turn. So yeah, somebody's just said it, you can write some code that loops through um, a list of links. And in the uh, web scraping uh, for social scientists uh, course that we've done recently, um, yeah, we show you how to do that. Um, we show you how to write loops, which is good. So we're coming up to uh, an hour. Um, I'm happy to stay on for another couple of minutes. If there's more questions, um, you can contact you know, myself and Julia uh, to do with you know anything to do with this uh, work. So uh, where do I put my contact details? Uh, so we both work at the uh, University of Manchester. Um, I think our details are on the um, Twitch page itself. Um, but if you're just looking for me, you just kind of need to know how to spell my very Irish name, and then you can find me uh, on Manchester. And yeah, Julia's just posted some uh, our Twitter links, so we we check our Twitter links fairly often. Um, 
so yeah so if you can find my email address i'm more than happy to dis discuss your individual you know scraping projects what you're interested in doing um as well so on that note uh, i'm gonna say good evening uh thanks for joining us thanks for giving up your time uh, also thank you to julia as well uh, who's been fantastic uh, and next week uh, we'll be looking at how you collect data uh, from an api so that's instead of scraping a page there's an online database so there's a formal means of getting the data but the code is slightly uh, different so uh, i've been dermid you've been great thanks very much and i will see you uh, soon <laughs>